Hello and welcome, I'm Asjinko and today I'll be looking way back to what was going on in gaming 30 years ago. I'm talking about the bygone era of October 1994, so let's see what happened. We officially kick off the spookiest time of the year. It's the season when the leaves start falling and kids dress up in monster costumes. Except I'm from South Africa, so we had none of that. It's springtime over here with no candy festivities or spooky decorations. Growing up, I did enjoy this time of year for all the slasher films and scary games I could get my hands on. So let's get into the spirit with some good old titles. There's no better way than to start off with something eerily obscure. A console I don't really know, and a game I know of even less. It's the TurboGrafx-16, or PC Engine as it's known outside of North America, which I've honestly never heard about. From what I could gather, it looks like it did alright in Japan, but since it released after the Genesis in the US, it didn't perform as well over there. The game released was called Basted, and it truly really is something or another. I don't know what to say about this game, just watch some gameplay on YouTube. It's definitely something. Arcade saw quite the busy month. There was a good old side-scrolling shooter called Darius Gaiden, and also in the beat'em up corner there was Armored Warriors giving us enough incentive to say farewell to handfuls of coins. On the bit more recognizable side of things, we saw two popular titles come out. Richard Cobb gave Mini a young kid itchy trigger fingers with its awesome light gun action. As it saw two sequels released, along with ports to Sega Saturn, PC and PlayStation 2, it's safe to say this was the start of a successful series. Speaking of successes, the second Samurai Showdown fighting game graced the public allowing youths across the globe the chance to pummel each other into submission. With a string of sequels and spin-offs, including a successful reboot that came out in 2019, it's good to see a series survive for this long. Moving on over to the SNES, there are a few interesting games that popped up, such as Demon's Crest, released in Japan. Now this is the third title in a Ghosts and Goblins spin-off series where you get to play as Firebrand, an enemy from that game. Sadly, I never played it, but the concept alone sounds great. Also crossing over to Japan, we had two titles, funny enough, first releasing in the West, something you don't hear that often. Kid Clown in Crazy Chase, as well as Mr. Nuts, a game that actually has a game studio named after it. Back on the flip side of the coin, two titles first released in Japan came on over to the West, Sheen's Revenge and Sparkster. On top of that, we had Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures hit the market to be very well received by critics and fans alike, something that's a pleasant surprise with a licensed title. It used an engine similar to the Super Star Wars games, giving players an action-packed ride through all of the original Indiana Jones films. It honestly looks really fun and makes me wish I had this one as a kid, I would have loved it. The Genesis slash Mega Drive side of things also saw a pretty great month. We had the hotly anticipated Adventures of Yogi Bear make a splash on consoles. Maybe there are some hardcore Yogi fans out there, so for all I know, that wasn't even a joke, but I've never heard of it. It did hit SNES at the same time though, so that's a good thing. The sequel to Bubsy also came out. Now I've heard gamers really enjoy the Bubsy games, but sadly I never got my hands on them. Speaking of a series I'm embarrassed to have missed, the second Shining Force game also released. Since I'm quite a big fan of RPGs and tactical strategy gameplay, I think I really would have enjoyed these games. A release I did get to try out though was the fighting game Brutal Pause of Fury. I recall my cousin owned the game, so we played it a bit, and I can vigorously say that it definitely existed. We usually switched over to Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter real quick, so that's about the extent of how I remembered the game. What stuck with me over the years though was that box art. Young as Jenko thought it was the coolest thing ever, which made the actual game that much more of a letdown. On the more memorable side of things though was the release of Sonic and Knuckles. Any release of a Sonic game in the Genesis era was something to be celebrated, and the introduction of the iconic Knuckles was no exception. It's probably not even necessary to point out what a huge mainstay he has become to the Sonic brand, so that's already a big moment, but this title achieves something even more memorable. Sonic and Knuckles was supposed to be released with the third Sonic game, but as it worked out the two titles were split with the third being released months prior. 
When Sonic & Knuckles finally hit markets in October 94, it allowed players to choose which of those two characters they wanted to play throughout the levels. The cartridge's biggest feature though was the lock-on technology. This allowed players to insert the previous Sonic games into that cartridge and play Knuckles throughout those games as well. This was ingenious and a case of developers going that extra mile for their fanbase. So far for the month known for its scares and terror, we've been pretty light on those sort of games. Well then how about a console so infamous it not only dug its own grave but managed to put the entire company behind it six feet under. That was maybe a bit too dramatic but the Atari Jaguar notoriously struggled sales wise and did end up causing Atari to pull out of the console market. The game that was released on the console was none other than Alien vs Predator. For the time it was a relatively ambitious title as it featured three races each of their own play styles. In 94, this was quite the innovative feature, but even so, the Jaguar did the game no favors. Luckily, it took a few years, but Rebellion took a mulligan and got it right the second time with AVP on the PC a few years later. Speaking of PC, we had a real banger hit shelves, a title that needs no introduction. It's the first person shooter that made the genre what it is today and revolutionized gaming as we know it. Of course I'm talking about Blake Stone Planet Strike. Just looking at that cover tells you everything you need to know. Well I don't know how good it was, but sadly for it, it was overshadowed and got pummeled out of the history books by an actual king. As I said earlier, it's been a scare light Halloween so far, but we're making up for that in a big way with the gore-faced granddaddy shooter of them all, Doom 2. After the first Doom's immeasurable success, becoming an industry-defining game that sold millions. Its software had a big legacy to live up to if they were going to make a sequel on par with Doom. And step up to the plate they certainly did. As any true successor to the throne should be, the second installment took everything that made the first game great and redefined it. Pre-orders caused stores to struggle with the demand to keep up. The supply it expected would hold shelves over for three months ended up selling out within the first exceeding a million worth of copies sold. Even that would be decent by today's standards, but in 94 this was absolute insanity. The legacy of Doom is a monument any studio would aspire to replicate. 30 years later and the franchise is still going strong, with another title currently in the pipeline and highly anticipated by a ravenous fanbase. The quality of the series speaks volumes, even with the black sheep of the family, 2004's Doom 3 having gained quite the cult following. I'll admit, it's a guilty pleasure of mine as I quite enjoyed it. It's quite a testament to the strength of this million dollar franchise that as the decades pass, players keep blasting demons back to hell. This was just a look back at what came out in the way back era of October 1994. Do any of these stand out to you? Then feel free to leave a shout out in the comments so we can chat some more about these great games of old. Thanks for joining me for a glimpse into the past. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more retro old school gaming goodness. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.